How's everyone doing today? I have a Blu-ray and DVD update with 13 pickups right here. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. First up is the release that everybody picked up. Rogue One, a uh, Star Wars story. This happens right before A New Hope. Kind of a standalone movie, but there's obviously a lot of tie-ins. And um, I thought a lot of it synced together very well. And I liked uh, seeing certain characters you know, bump into each other, certain little things here and there. And I love K2SO. That was probably my favorite character of the whole film. Let me know who your favorite character from uh, Rogue One is. And I thought this was immersive, riveting. I, I really enjoyed the heck out of this one. Visually stunning. And I actually opted to go with the standard Blu-ray edition with a, kind of the reflective slipcover right there because I personally prefer this artwork over the Steelbook. I normally would have gotten the Steelbook, but I just I think this is just really sweeter looking uh, cover art right there and I like the foil design and the emboss of the characters the embossing of it and uh, some good special features on here too so yeah had to pick this one up I was tempted to get the I think it was the target one where I had like the window box where you can change the different characters out but I don't know I'm pretty happy with the look of this standard one it's one of the few times where they I think they did a really good job with their standard release I, I know um, that they're you know gonna re-release this probably with you know, the extended cut, 3D, and you know, all that kind of extra bonus scenes and commentaries and stuff like that later down the line, which is what they always typically do. And then there'll be a box set and, you know, other special editions and stuff like that. But had to pick it up. Um, yeah, can't wait to revisit that one. I remember enjoying the heck out of it, so looking forward to checking it out. And Donnie Yen, too. Amazing cast in there. Love to see Donnie Yen. Force Whitaker as well. Uh, next up are a couple titles from Arrow Video. Uh, first up is Property is No Longer a Theft. And this is from um, Elio Petri, who did um, Citizen Above Suspicion, which is a fantastic film, which I have on Criterion somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is basically kind of a dark, comedic take on... Um, societal norm or corruption in, in society and uh, the norms that it has become in certain aspects but a bank clerk gets uh, denied um, and then he kind of takes his aggression out uh, on one of the butchers who's just a terrible person um, but yeah I'll go ahead and show you there's the disc artwork blu-ray and then the the DVD in Arrow Video I say this every time when I get an Arrow Video release they do a phenomenal job one of the best companies out there releasing along with uh Criterion Collection, Eureka, Twilight Time, Film Movement's an underrated one. Um, they have, uh, you know, great transfer special features. They got the booklet in here with, you know, all kinds of information and pictures from the film. And then a newly commissioned artwork, which is right there. And then you have the reversible artwork, which is right there, which is <laughs> interesting. I think he, he steals his mistress as well. Um, the guy who gets denied and steals the butcher's mistress. So, yeah, and you got the clear case as well, which is great for collectors. So, definitely, and then you get a little booklet for other um, advertisement for other Arrow video releases. But, yeah, one of the best companies out there releasing. And I love the titles that they choose, especially this is part of the Arrow Academy line, which is new here in the U.S. They've had it around in the U.K. for a while. So, these are Arrow U.S. releases. The next one in the Arrow Academy uh, line is Story of Sin by uh, Wallerin Barzik. He did uh, The Beast, and he did, uh, what else did he do? Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Osborne. And he did some other ones that were just really trippy, surreal, crazy sexual stuff, which is sounds like what this is gonna be. Um, they say it's a you know surreal meditation of L'Amour Fu, which I believe translates to um, crazy love or insane love. Uh, but yeah, so basically it's a story of a woman who falls for a guy and she tries to find him after he moves away and she gets involved in crazy sexual stuff and a ton of special features in here. I like the new restorations that they have for these films as well. And then there's the, the disc, the Blu-ray, and then the DVD. And then here is the old school artwork, which you can't get in trouble for uh, drawn boobies. So, you know, not worried about that. But uh, that, that was actually really comical. I was not expecting that. I had no idea what that cover looked like, but uh, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, and then again, you've got the booklet in here as well with all kinds of information, tons of information in this one for the film. So yeah, this is uh, his first film that I think was uh, in Poland. So that is pretty cool as well. And next up are three Twilight Time releases. 
And uh, I used to be one of those people who used to kind of complain at how expensive they were, but now I kind of understand the business model. Many companies are doing this. Code Red is another one. Uh, but I think it's just going to be the societal norm now for releases, especially going in the future. I think there's going to be a lot of burn on demand. I've noticed this with, I can't, I think it might be Sony that's doing it. They did like the net and there was another one recently that they put out where it's burn on demand, but it's like 30 bucks. And essentially, you know, that's what these ones are. These ones are much better uh, made as well. Um, again, Twilight Time has become one of my favorite companies releasing because they do a great job with the releases. Uh, I appreciate the interior artwork as well. And the clear cases is nice for collectors, but also the films that they have chose to release. They put out a ton of great films. I don't think there's really been any films that I've watched from them that I haven't enjoyed. And again, you get a booklet in here too. And this one is, whoa, I haven't seen this one, but uh, I've seen a couple clips and uh, I'm gonna have to calm down when I watch this movie. I'm Afraid of Heights, and this is shot in Cinemascope in and around the Grand Canyon. And some of the shots, especially right there, you get an idea. It looks like it's going to be just fright-inducing for me. So, yeah, there's a bunch of murders going on, and then um, the deputy has to figure out what's going on. So it's going to be like a murder mystery thriller kind of deal going on with some crazy cinematography in here. So looking forward to checking this one out. And one of these ones has a score, yeah... Uh, that just made me think of for some reason um, Property is no longer a theft has a score from Anio Morricone who's incredible and the mistress in here is played by Dario Nicolodi who is in uh, Argento's Deep Red Next up is Chilly Scenes of Winter which ah oh, this went by another title it was originally titled um, Head Over Heels I believe which is a terrible title and I think that was actually another um, I think I might have it over here somewhere, where it was a, uh, another rom-com movie made, like, uh, I think I wanted to say in the 90s. But yeah, this Chilly Scenes of Winter is a much better title of the film and very fitting, too. There's some great wintry scenes in this one. And I've always enjoyed this one, so I'm very happy this is getting uh, the Blu-ray release uh, with Mary Beth Hurt and John Hurt in here. Um, basically, it's about a guy who falls in love hard for this girl who is married but she's kind of on the rocks or separated and uh, has so much emotional honesty my only gripe about this one is there's like two scenes of dialogue that are just really subversive and come out of nowhere but i guess it kind of plays into the fact that uh the guy in here john heard uh his mother is mentally ill and then you kind of hear about the grandfather as well so maybe that kind of trickles down um but really enjoyable film kind of straightforward kind of ordinary in a way it's a slice of life just dealing with the relationships um and again the thing that i appreciate about it is the emotional honesty that really drives it i mean it's ordinary in the sense of the plot but not the way that it comes together very well done film and some really <laughs> comedic moments in here too there's a lot of breaking of the fourth wall where he's talking to the camera and explaining uh the backstory of their relationship but i love this film so happy for this uh, next up is Baby Boom with uh, Diane Keaton, which I remember watching all the time as a kid. I remember loving this film. Uh, this is one, you know, I remember I think like I would get babysat and they'd put this one on and like just one of the guys and um, some kind of wonderful and movies like that. So this is one that has a kind of a lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, I think she was, um, she was uh, like a career woman in Manhattan. She loses her job and her boyfriend who's played by Harold Ramis and she moves out. To, she gets a baby. I can't remember how she gets the baby. Um, but she's, you know, starts her life anew, essentially, and she moves to a Vermont house with, uh, and she meets Sam Shepard, and I think she makes, like, jams. I think that's her big thing, and, uh, it was a really good rom-com movie, heartwarming, and I uh, can't wait to revisit this one. And I'll go ahead and show you the artwork. This is the old-school cover art that I remember, which is the same, or similar, but, uh, this one's pink, obviously. But yeah, this is the one that I remember. I had the old DVD of it back in the day. There's Harold Ramis right there too. But again, I love what they do with their releases. That's a great shot too. <laughs> but I'm excited to revisit this one because it's just so much nostalgia for me. And I'll go ahead and show you the inside interior artwork and everything too, the disc artwork for Chilly Scenes of Winter. Which again, I love what Twilight Time is doing. Oh, how, how weird is this? I've got two covers in here. <laughs> I just noticed that bonus <laughs> that is very intriguing i've never experienced that before i had two covers kind of i guess a you know factory mess up right there but and there's the booklet and there's the crazy mother in there 
Uh, definitely some poignant scenes in this one that I really enjoyed. Next up from Mill Creek, there's a bunch in here. Uh, Punchline, which I remember watching this when I was younger too, where there's stand-up comedians Sally Field and Tom Hanks. And I like the interaction a lot with uh, both of them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a while, but I remember this kind of uh, having some uh, good comedic elements going on, especially, you know, with the stand-up parts, but them dealing with uh, the dramatic parts too and helping each other and good stuff, good cast and great cast interaction. Next up is a Psycho Circus triple feature from Mill Creek, uh, which is The Brotherhood of Satan, which I'm familiar with, The Creeping Flesh, which I've heard of, and Torture Garden, which I'm not familiar with. Torture Gardens from 67, with, which has Jack, uh, Jack Palance, Burgess Meredith, and Peter Cushing. So that sounds amazing. Brotherhood of Satan. Uh, I remember essentially like a, a cult movie. And then Creeping Flesh, which I haven't seen, but I, I'm familiar with. Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing is in this one. So some great films with great cast in this one. Looking forward to checking, uh, revisiting Brotherhood of Satan and checking out Creeping Flesh in Torture Garden. Next up is a triple feature from Mill Creek. I'm really enjoying what they're doing with a lot of their releases. They're budget titles, um, and uh, the Blu-rays are, you know, decently well done. You know what to expect with them. Uh, they're not going to blow you away picture quality-wise, but they're usually a decent upgrade over the DVD counterparts, and for the price point, you can't beat it. Uh, my only issue is their packaging for a lot of their sets, especially their DVD sets where they're stacked discs and things like that. And the, like the Heathcliff set, the sliders set, the way that a, the cardboard box is put on there. Uh, the Blu-ray sets are better. Uh, but this is the triple feature where it has Windchill, Closure, and Perfect Stranger. I've never even heard of Closure. It has Danny Dwyer and Gillian Anderson in it. And then Windchill is one that I remember people raving about, and I just thought it was hot garbage. I remember I, I was having a discussion with uh, Blu-ray Hoarder on here a while back, and he was talking about it was one of his favorite horror movies, and I just thought it was nothing special. I thought it was below, well below average. All I can really remember is that um, two college kids get like stuck in their car and there's like a twist at the end. I think it had something to do with drugs or something and I, I just thought it was just terrible and it just didn't work and it was just so convoluted and just ugh. Perfect Stranger is one that I've always wanted to see with Halle Berry and Bruce Willis so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I remember seeing clips for it and it looked decently thrilling. Next up is Little Nikita which I've never seen this one but I remember um, seeing it in the video rental stores when I was younger, Sydney, uh, Sydney Portier and River Phoenix. Uh, great loss with uh, River Phoenix passing away back in the day. Really talented young actor. Uh, this is set, I guess, kind of Cold War era-esque, I am assuming. Uh, he's applying for uh, Air Force Academy and then um, they're doing a background check and they find out that his parents are Russian spies. And I really love the TV show uh, The Americans. Such an underrated show. Phenomenal that I don't hear enough people talking about. Dealing with a similar concept of you know Cold War era and Russian spies. Uh, but looking forward to checking that one out. Next up is Levity, which I remember seeing parts of this forever ago. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton, I believe, was uh, in jail for murder. Yeah, serving a 22-year sentence for killing a store clerk, a clerk in a failed robbery attempt. And then he gets uh, unexpectedly released from prison and he finds a sense of redemption in uh, different characters and kind of helping him regain his life. So, good cast in here too. Billy Bob Thornton, Morgan Freeman, Holly Hunter, and uh, Kirsten Dunst. I'm not the biggest Kirsten Dunst fan, but I really liked her in Melancholia from Lars von Trier. Uh, next up is The Suburbans, which this looks super ridiculously cheesy. Um, kind of reminds me of That Thing You Do, but maybe like a more comedic take, uh, at least from the cover right there. Jeffrey Love Hewitt uh, and Will Ferrell is in here too, and a few other recognizable people. But it's basically... Um, this music executive brings back uh, this 80s band and her favorite 80s band and they kind of relive their 15 minutes of fame except it's you know reality TV, MTV interviews and things like that going on and I guess the band is figuring out how to deal with all that. It looks like it's going to be an entertaining comedic ride. I remember Will Ferrell did a lot of these kind of uh, low budget comedy roles way back in the day before he got famous. Uh, this looks, I'm trying to find out, yeah this is from 1999. Next up is uh, from Wilgo USA. This is The Legend of Bruce Lee Volume 2. I waited so long for this volume to come out. It seems like Volume 1 came out like a year ago. I don't know the exact time, but it seemed like it was forever ago, so I've been waiting for this. It's a uh, 10 episodes. It's kind of a biopic series, and uh, Danny Chan plays Bruce Lee, who did a phenomenal job, in my opinion, of him. Uh, so it's basically just going through his life and, you know, setting up his school and his uh, kung fu and martial arts and becoming a star and his rise to uh, stardom. So... 
I uh, really enjoyed Volume 1. Looking forward to checking out Volume 2. Ten episodes on here again. Great biopic series from what I've seen so far. So there you go. Those are my 13 pickups. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. Leave me a comment or video response down below. And hope everybody's doing well. Take care.